so much most people never get past one of his volumes, even if they try, because he wrote multiple volumes on the history of civilizations. And he was quite a unique man. He was wrestling with the question, why is it that Christianity produces so many good things in the world when it's a religion that he had no interest in himself? He didn't consider himself a believer. But he had to admit as he studied the Western cultures that this power of Christianity did so many good things. And he was trying to wrestle with it. Because he was a scholar, apparently he dreamed in English as well as Latin. I don't know, do any of you dream in Latin out there? If you do, you're an Arnold Toynbee in the making. But he tells us that he had a dream as he was wrestling with this great question of why does Christianity do good in the world? Why this strange religion? What? And he saw himself, according to what I just read, in an image connected with the high altar of the Benedictine Abbey of Ampleforth in Yorkshire, England. So he had quite a specific dream. He knew a little chapel. There was, if you will, a cross with Christ upon it. And in the dream, he saw himself clinging to it. And he saw the words in Latin. They are amplexus expecta. Amplexus expecta. Now to translate, that means to cling and to hope to cling and to hope. And when he woke up, he said to himself, this is what Christianity offers that nothing else in the world gives. Something to hold on, to, to hold on to Christ and his cross and his, his blessing and hope for things that are far greater than this limited world can ever show us. He said, that is really the secret of Christianity. It is the power of hope in Christ. And is that not what is the certain confidence that we all are to find when we move from, I don't even know, but God knows. Because God knows we know that all things work together for good. Because he's known me personally from eternity past. And so I am sure as I cling in hope to the sovereign God that all things are working together for good to him who loved us to those that are called according to his purpose. And so today it's my desire to persuade you to once again move from your limited knowledge to the one who knows everything. Yes, he knows the number of hairs on your head. He sees the sparrow who falls. He knew every day of your life before there's one of them. And because he knows this about you, Look at the persecution, the tribulation, the heartache, the danger of the sword, and say, I'm more than a conqueror. It's not easy, but I know the God who has a purpose, and all things are in his knowledge, including me and you. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this opportunity to study the scriptures together. We ask, Lord, that our faith might be not in our best reason, our best wisdom, but into Jesus Christ, unto whose image you have known us forever to be being formed and conformed unto in this world. And that by your revelation and by your spirit, by your word and by your spirit, we have these certain truths that we can lay hold of. We give this all to you now with our hearts, asking for a growing faith. We pray it in Christ's name. Amen. Okay, I think we're concluding.